हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम सुभाष चंद्र बोस फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जर्नलिज्म एंड मास कम्युनिकेशन इन बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन मॉड्यूल हिस्ट्री ऑफ रीजनल फिल्म्स अंडर दिस पेपर वेमेन मीडिया एंड फिल्म्स इन दिस पेपर यू रीड अबाउट डॉक्यूमेंट्री फिल्म्स now in this module we will discuss about the history of regional films in india wherein we will focus on the origin of different regional films along with the components that have helped these films make a niche for themselves in a multilingual and multicultural country after going through this module you will be able to develop an idea about origin of regional languages in india and uh, explain the beginning and development of regional films in india and you will be also be able to describe in brief the major regional films origin and growth and finally you will be able to develop your concept about the famous regional cinema personalities the cinema of mumbai is known as bollywood cinema or hindi cinema <clears throat> as we know it is understood that the because of its industry and its role hindi cinema shapes modern india as well as creates and spreads new culture and fashion in the society but apart from this there is another cinema stream that also gives an identity to the regional community with the advent of talkies in 1931 many films began to be made in vernacular languages in different parts of the country like indian literature indian cinema to emerged as one face with many voices films made in vernacular languages came to be known as regional film industries each of these regional films industries adopted the name of the language it produced films in friends with the influence of the first taki alamara in 1931 which was released its regional cinema began its journey with this films During the decade of the 1940s films began to be made and screened in Gujarati Tamil Telugu Bengali and other languages among them Bengali cinema stood out for it was the only regional film industry which managed to prove its recognition on international panorama let us now discuss and widen our vision about the concept idea and major factors behind the beginning of regional films why regional there is a questions obviously will be raised as to why these films is called as is known as regional films have you ever thought as to why the films made in vernacular languages are referred to as regional films well the answer is that is because they are made in different languages spoken in different regions of india to understand these regional languages better let us examine their roots india has been a witness to the evolution of many languages these languages have been classified mainly into three groups first is indo european or indo aryan and second is dravidian and third languages group is austroasiatic languages group let us find out in brief these linguistic groups separately s first is indo european group or indo aryan it is considered to be spoken by 75% population in india it is understood that indo aryan languages are the result of a diversification of the old indo iranian branch of languages 
which were a part of the vast Indo-European family. These languages are derived from Sanskrit, the classical and religious language of Hinduism. Their text and alphabets derived from Devanagari, with the exception of Urdu, which is written in the Arbo Persian alphabet in all corners of North India, in central part of India and the valley of the Ganges. And let us know about the second group of language, which is Dravidian. Dravidians are considered native to India, who were pushed back by the invaders to the south of the subcontinent. The languages these people spoke were called Dravidian languages. With the time, these languages absorbed a very considerable proportion of Sanskrit words and also adopted Hindu religion and culture. Dravidian languages exist in the forms of Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam in the South India. Third is Austro Asiatic is the third group of language. Students, let us know about this. It is divided into two groups. One group comprises Tibeto Burmese languages of the pre Himalayan regions, and the other includes languages spoken in the extreme northeast of the country, which are Manipur, Tripura, Mizoram, Nagaland and also such as Bodo of Assam region and the Monkhemer, which is spoken by some 5 million speakers in hilly regions. When films began to be made in these languages, they became popular by the name of the language they were made in. For instance, films made in Tamil came to be known as Tamil cinema, and the films produced in Marathi were dubbed Marathi films and so and so forth. Friends, let us know about the beginning of regional films. The success of Ardeshir M. Irani's first talkies, Alamara, inspired filmmakers to make films in their native languages. Thus, films started to be made in Malayalam, Oriya, Gujarati, Bengali, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Bhajpuri, etc. The theme of the films was often mythological. Let us know about the examine some of these vernacular films industries separately, like Gujarati cinema. Let us know about Gujarati cinema as from which date and from which period it started its journey. Uh, friends, Gujarati cinema started its journey in 1922. It is called Dhollywood due to its recog recognition and contributions to the Indian cinema. Gujarati cinema has gained popularity among regional film industry in India. Gujarati films have dealt with issues ranging from mythological to historical and from social to political ones. There are so many actors and directors from Gujarati cinema who work in Hindi cinema are what is popularly known as Bollywood cinema. Even before of the screening of the first Taki, Alamara, a short Gujarati sound films entitled Chao Shaune Murabbo was released on 4th February 1931 in Bombay. It included the song Mankhad Karade, which was the first sound heard in any Indian film. It was produced by Manek Lal Patel with lyrics and dialogue by Natvarsya, the first Gujarati feature film entitled Mumbaini Sethani was released on 9th April in 1932. It was a short of two real films. The first full-length Gujarati sound feature film Narsimha Mehta 
was also released in the year 1932. It was directed by Nanu Bhai Vakil. The film's cast featured Mohan Lal, Maruti Rao, Master Manhar, and Miss Mehtab. It belonged to Saint Films, Jenner, and was based on the life of the Saint Narsimha Mehta, who absorbed a creed that was followed centuries later by Mahatma Gandhi. The film was matchless. as it avoided any depiction of miracles another social movie ghar jamai was released in the year 1935 which was directed by homi master the film starred hira jamna baby noor jahan amu alimia jamshed ji and gulam rasool the film features a resident son in law or gharjamai and it escapes as well as his problematic attitude towards the freedom of a woman it was a comedy and turned out to be a major success in the industry the scripts and stories dealt in the gujarati films are intrinsically human they include relationship and family oriented subjects with human aspirations and deal with the indian family culture with the time gujarati cinema moved ahead in its journey with several other important social political and religious issues also raised by gujarati filmmakers gujarati movies such as karyawar which was released in 1948 and it was directed by Chaturbhuj Doshi and the other film is Vadilona Vanke this film was released in 1950 and was directed by Ramchandra Thakur and the other is Gadano Bale this film was released in 1968 and it was directed by Rati Bhai Punatar and Lilu Di Dharti directed by Vallabh Chokshi These films brought a immense success to the industry. The movies like Gadano Bail had a strong realism and reformism. Kerala is known as one of the rich states on all parameters as we know uh, be it literacy or arts. The first permanent theater was established in Kerala by Jose Kattu Karan at Ollur Thrissur in 1913 hence it is known as Jose Electrical Bioscope the first cinema hall in Kerala operated with a manually film projector was opened in Thrissur in 1907 by Jose Kattu Karan Malayalam cinema is the fourth largest film industry in India Malayalam cinema is referred to as Mollywood. It first released silent film was Vigatha Kumaran. The production of this film was started in 1928 and it was released in Trivandrum Capital Theater on 23rd October 1930. Dear students, the film had both Malayalam and English languages in it. It was directed by J.C. Daniel, who also played the lead role. Daniel was a dentist who sold all his assets to make this film, which was an enormous success. The second Malayalam film, Marathanda Verma, which was directed by P.V. Rao, appeared on the screen in 1931. It was a silent historical film, glorifying the Optimus character of a raja of that time who was a founder of modern Travancore in 18th century it was the only film from the south which was preserved in the national film archive at pune the film was shown in the first international film festival of kerala in calicut the first malayalam talkies film was 
Balan, which was released in 1938. The film was directed by S. Nutani and was produced at Chennai. After this movie, another film, Janambika, was directed by S. Nutani in 1940. Then, Prahlad film came in 1941, which was directed by K. Subramaniam of Madras and featured Guru Gopinath and T. Gopinath. Then the director P. J. Cheryan came with Nirmala in 1948. It was the first film that explored the possibility of music and songs in cinema. The lyrics of the film were composed by the legendary Malayalam poet G. Shankar Kuroop. The song became very popular and the song and dance sequences became essential ingredients of Malayalam cinema. Another notable film was Neela Kweli. This film came on screen in, in, in 1954. The film had an authentic story that was written by renowned writer Urub and directed by Dew of P. Bhaskaran and Ramu Karyat. The film dealt with the issues of untouchability. This was also the first Malayalam film with outdoor shots. It went on to archive recognition at the national level. Malayalam cinema also felt the influence of neorealism wave of French and Italian cinema. As the newspaper boy was a Malayalam movie inspired by this wave. It was directed by P. Ramdas in 1955 and the period of 1970s witnessed a drastic change in the perspective of filmmakers and viewers of Kerala towards the cinema. At the heart of these changes were the emergence of young filmmakers and the advent of film society movements. Over the years, Malayalam cinema has come a long way claiming many national awards. Malayalam cinema has been enriched by the services of a number of learned personalities with a flair for filmmaking. Prominent among them are Adur Gopalakrishnan, G. Arvindan, P. A. Baker, K. P. Kumaran, K. R. Mohan, etc. Among which Adur Gopal Krishnan brought parallel cinema to Kerala. His landmark movie was Swambaram, which was released in 1972, introduced a new style of narrating a story in the films. And apart from him, G. Arvindan took the moment of parallel cinema ahead with his critically acclaimed film Uttarayanam in 1974. Apart from them, P. A. Baker, K. P. Kumaran, K. R. Mohan, M. T. Vasudevan, Padmarajan and K. G. George also brought laurels to the Malayalam cinema. Now let us know about the origins and the development of Tamil cinema. Friends, Madras has been a center for film production in the South Indian languages especially Tamil. The city has played a stellar role in the development of Indian cinema. Tamil cinema is regarded as the third largest film industry in India. The subjects of Tamil films were mostly taken from Puranas and mythologies. Tamil cinema started its journey with the release of its first silent film Kachikawa in 1916. The first Taki of Tamil cinema was Kalidas which was released in 1931 and contained in total 50 songs. During those days in Tamil cinema, subject messages were elaborated through songs. It was a similar to Bengali cinema when it came to elaborating an issues through various representations. 
just as it was a common practice among Bengali filmmakers to explain issues of films through jatra and drama. Tamil cinema also adopted the same way by bringing in drama, circus and wrestling in its storytelling. The reporter of the drama was limited to a few mythological which was written as musical. The story was standardized as a series of songs. The whole journey of Tamil cinema can be categorized under three phases. First is the Puranic, Mythological and Folklore period from 1931 to 1950 and the second is the Melodramatic story period from 1951 to 1975 and the third is the Partly Realistic Anti-Sentimental Stories period that is from 1975 onwards. K. Balachandar, Bharti Raja, Mahendran, Balu Mahendra, Dorai, Jaya Bharti, Bhagiraj, Rudraya, Yeche, Kaja, they are considered as the pioneers of Tamil cinema. Some of the notable films of Tamil cinema, these are Uttari Pukkal, it was directed by Mahendran, and the film Pasi is directed by Dorai. These films challenges to the myth of the ideal heroine. Bharti Raja established the trend of shooting of films in village location and Mahendra gave the villagers solidity, depth and relevance by his film 16 Vyadinili. After the demise of M.G. Ramchandran in 1988, Tamil film industry lost its speed, but the attendance of Rajnikanth, Jailalita brought back the honor of Tamil cinema. Both Rajni and Jaya acted not only in Tamil films, but also in Telugu and Hindi films too. Further, Tamil films industry was enriched by the arrival of legends like Mani Ratnam, A. R. Rahman and Elaya Raja who gave and are still giving their best to the industry. They made Tamil films industry visible and popular on Indian map. Mani Ratnam is a prolific director who makes not only Tamil films but also Hindi, Kannad and Telugu films. Many films in Tamil languages have been dubbed in other Indian languages. Rajni Khan's robot which was originally made in Tamil and Prabhas and Anushka Shetty starer Bahubali and Bahubali 2 which were originally made in South Indian languages went on to be dubbed in other languages too and claimed nationwide attention. These films underline the success of South Indian cinema. Bahubali and Bahubali 2 The Conclusion These films were directed by S.S. Rajmauli. Bahubali was released in July 2015 and Bahubali 2 The Conclusion was released in April 2017. These two films collected above rupees 1000 crore and were successful in foreign countries too. Now let us know and throw some focuses and lights on Bengali cinema. French cinema established its strong presence in both Bombay and Calcutta. The Bengali cinema is also known as Tollywood for the Bengali language films. Industry is based in the Tolliganj region of Kolkata. The origin of the nickname Tollywood is the result of a portmanteau of the words Tolliganj and Hollywood. Calcutta had a nascent film industry in the 1910s. The city remained the capital of India till 1911, as we know, and in the field of art and theatre was at par with Bombay. Bengali cinema carved a niche for itself by producing some of India's best known filmmakers 
and films. Bengal witnessed the first screening of a film in 1896. Only a few months after, Lumiere brothers showed their films in Bombay on 7th July 1896. The credit for bringing films to Bengal goes to Hira Lal Sen, who started the Royal Bioscope Company and also making short film from around 1900. The earliest known Bengal film Bilva Mangal was released in 1919 and based on the play of the same name by Urdu player writer Aga Hasra Kashmiri it was produced by Madan Theatre Limited Kolkata Jain's Film Corporation which controlled silent film distributions and a chain of cinema theaters across the subcontinent New theaters produced such iconic films as Devaki Bose Chandi Das which was released in 1932 and the first talkie version of Dev Das released in 1935 directed by P Barua with KL Sahgal starring in the film's Hindi version New theater films were more influenced by the then Ravindra Sangeet and also assimilates the essence of work of Sharad Chandra Chatterjee Sharad Chandra Chatterjee is regarded as the best selling popular novelist in all over country well bengal is the land which rich crops in the field of art social and cinema till the partition of 1947 Kolkata was the intellectual capital of India and still it is a probably the richest Indian city in terms of culture the middle of the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century which was period of remarkable development of bengali languages and culture rabindranath tagore and raja ram mohan roy gave a new height and direction to the social culture literature and art of kolkata cinema is always influenced by literature art and culture of any society ever since the advent of the taki theater which was particularly developed in kolkata and uh, novel became a source of inspiration for the bengali cinema like all indian cinemas bengali cinema also had and still has its classic commercial production in half melodrama and half realism in which song and music play a considerable role it was the decade of 50s when such kind of art creation was in fashion but on the other hand the period of silent films as well as the decades of the 30s and 40s has been brilliant in bengal for several reasons around this time new theaters grew with competent technicians creating awareness among the society through their art satyajit ray mrilal sen tapan sinha and ritvik ghatak were some of the giants of bengali cinema through their works bengali cinema continued to earn name and fame for four decades after them young talents such as p patra buddhadev das gupta utplendu chakravarti nitish mukherji gautam chakravarti gautam ghosh and aparna sen took bengali cinema ahead the art creations of these intellectual giants will laurel sebrat but find few exhibitors at home during the 1950s the bengali cinema saw the emergence of its popular stars in uttam kumar and suchitra sen they gave a new height to the industry The best known event of the 50s Bengali cinema is nonetheless Pothar Panchali. Pothar Panchali 
film was directed by and made by Satyajit Ray. It was released in 1955 and this film was produced by the government of West Bengal. This film won the best human document in the Cannes Film Festival in 1956. The film Pothar Panchali was appreciated by the film goers and critics like Aprajita and Apur Sansar formed Satyajit Ray's Apu Trilogy which celebrated a silver jubilee in Calcutta. Noted Bengali actor Swamitra Chatterjee made a name for himself courtesy his role of Apu in Apu Sansar. Swamitra Chatterjee and Uttam Kumar became top male stars in Bengali cinema. They also worked in Ray's classic Charulata in 1964. Satyajit Ray worked with Uttam Kumar in Naika in 1966 which was a film supposedly inspired by Uttam's iconic stardom. Finally, Satyajit Ray received an Oscar for his lifetime's work days before his death on 23rd April 1992. It marked the end of an era, but the 90s also saw the rise of other young filmmakers in Bengali cinema industry. There were other Bengali filmmakers of deputy too who gave new heights to Bengali cinema with their works. Prominent among them are Ritvik Ghatak, Mridal Sen, Aparna Sen, Ritu Parno Ghos, etc. Let us know about Bhojpuri cinema. Friends, Bhojpuri cinema is known as the heartbeat for the people of Hindi heartland. Filmmaking in Bhospuri language was the dream of the first president of India. Dr. Rajendra Prasad Dr. Prasad was from Bihar and had a soft corner for Bhospuri language. He met with a film personality called Nazir Hussain. Uh, friends, Nazir Hussain was from Ghazipur districts of Uttar Pradesh and uh, Dr. Prasad had asked him to make a film in Bhospuri. And when the Dr. Prasad made his ask for making films in Bhospuri languages to Nazir Hussain, then Nazir Hussain had worked with a famous film director of Bengali cinema with Bimal Rai. Bimal Rai is a film director from Bengali cinema. And Nazir Hussain had worked with him as an assistant. When the Dr. Prasad made his hours for making film in Bhospuri to Nazir Hussain, then Nazir Hussain could not refuse the request from Dr. Prasad. That's why came on the screen the first Bhospuri film that is Ganga Maya Tohe Piyari Chadhaibo which was released in 1962. It was produced by Vishwanath Prasad Sahabadi and directed by Kundan Kumar under the banner of Nirmal Pictures. And it was a good film. A song based on Thumri, Babu Darogaji Kaune Karanwa Bhai Banal Piyava Mor, which was sung by Samshad Begum in Bhospuri languages, was used by Mahbub Khan in 1943. This song boomed from Bombay to Lahore. Mahbub Khan was from Gujarati cinema, but he gave a space to Bhospuri song in 1943 and it was an admirable step for Bhospuri languages. The decade of 90s saw a growth in Bhospuri cinema. The films such as My, directed by Rajkumar Sharma and Hamar Bhoji, directed by Kalpataru, did a great business at the box office. A milestone Bhospuri films is Nadia Kepar, which was directed by Govind Muniz and star Sachin, Sadhana Singh and Indar Thakur. Nadia Kepar was a smash hit and it established Bhospuri cinema on India's map. However, Bhospuri films popularity dipped after that and by 1990, the industry seemed to be completely finished. 
But again, a new wind came from Bhospuri cinema between 2001 to 2005. A film that gave a new recognition to the Bhospuri cinema was Sasura Bada Paisawala. This film was released in 2004 and it was directed by Ajay Sinha and starred Manoj Tiwari and Rani Chatterjee. The soundtrack of the film was directed by Lal Sinha. Lal Sinha is from Gaya in Bihar who came to Mumbai in 2001 and started his career as a music director. Cut see these films, Lal Sinha became the biggest name in Bhospuri film industry. During the year 2008, Manoj Tiwari and Ravi Kishan were the leading actor of Bhospuri films and their fees increased with their name. The success of their films led to dramatic growth in Bhospuri cinema. Many famous figures from mainstream cinema like Amitabh Bachchan, Mithun Chakravarti, Raja Murad, Raj Babbar, etc. also worked in Bhospuri film industry. Sujit Kumar, Kunal Sinha, Padma Khanna, Aruna Irani, and Bhagishri were among the popular figures of Bhospuri film industry in the past. At present, Dinesh Lal Yadav, Khesari Lal Yadav, Pavan Singh, Pakhi Hegde, Munali Shah, Amrapali Dube, Akshara Singh, and Kajal Raghwani are among the main faces who are working in Bhospuri film industry and flying the flag of Bhospuri Lions high not only at the national level so but also at the world level. So students, now let us sum up all that we have learned so far. In this module, we tried to learn about the brief history of regional films industry and also about linguistic groups on which the nomenclature of regional films industries are based. We also discussed about the history of different regional films industries separately. Firstly, we discussed the Gujarati cinema, wherein the beginning and growth of Gujarati films were dealt with. After that, Malayali films industry was discussed and we tried to explain as to how this Kerala based industry went on to become the fourth largest film industry in South India. The contributions of major actors and directors like Adur Gopala Krishnan and G. Arvindan were also discussed. Our focus then shifted to Tamil cinema. The students, which is considered the third largest regional film industry in South India. The industry established its recognition not only at national level but also on world level. We explained how Tamil films were being dubbed in other Indian languages and making huge profit. Next in our menu were Bengali cinema and Bhospuri cinema. We came to know about the contributions of Bengali film industry and filmmakers like Satyajit Ray, Ritvik Ghatak, Mridal Sen, Aparna Sen, Rituparno Ghos, etc who made Bengali cinema famous across the world. We also talked about Bhuspuri film industry and its progress over the years. Thank you.